What's up everybody? If you've been watching this channel, then you know we do a lot of electrical testing. Uh, it's been requested a couple times that I just do a video just for pretty much electrical testing equipment. So I'm going to cover everything from the essentials all the way to the specialty stuff. By far the most important tool in automotive electrical is the digital multimeter. Some people call it DVOM, some people call it DMM, I prefer DMM, but whatever. Now in a lot of the videos, you've seen this fancy snap-on DMM. There's nothing fancy about it. For years at the dealership, this is what I used. Uh, just a regular Craftsman uh, meter. Now I was going to go down to Harbor Freight and get a $8 DMM and do a test between all these, but it's not even worth the trouble. The only bad thing I would say, I guess, about the really cheapy meters would be that in a lot of the ones that I saw it just gives you the two tips here and you could definitely you know touch both battery posts with these but and a lot of times you know you've got to hook the meter up and use your hands to either move connectors or do whatever you got to do so if you spend a couple more dollars you might get a meter that's a little bit more versatile you know I was in the same boat and I went with the Craftsman just because you know it came with the alligator leads and everything Sometimes these will come with like a temperature probe and other stuff that never gets used. The multimeter is the most important tool, in my opinion. It can, it can do a lot of stuff. It can tell you a lot of things, you know, as long as you know how to use it. You know, another thing to consider is, you know, your midline meter might have something like a, an analog graph on its display. I don't know if this uh, Craftsman does. Yeah, it does. If you guys remember, we did that one time, I think. We were looking for a speed signal at a cruise control module and we kind of cheated a little bit and just used our meter to verify that we had speed signal. This is essential, no way around it, and if, as you guys have seen, we use this a lot. Now our next group, which is going to be all this, this is test lights. The way that a simple test light works, you can attach one end to the negative battery terminal, and touch the positive, and this test light lights up. It can also work the opposite way. You can touch the positive terminal with your clamp and it'll also light up the lamp. We've also got this computer safe test light. Just lights up a little LED inside there. Same deal here. You can reverse the way it's oriented and it'll still light up. Now let me ask you a question. Based on what you saw from these test lights, is the battery in good condition? Just hooked up one end of the meter to the positive battery and the negative to the other. You can see we're sitting at like 12.2, which is a little bit low, but there's no way we could have got this information with the test light. So while a test light may give you a quick go, no go, it is not a substitute for a meter. So as far as these kind of test lights go, you'll probably not see them anymore. I did use the LED test light in one video. We were testing the circuits at each of the tail light connectors. You know, at the time I was on the fence, I was thinking, would your average person have a meter? And my way of thinking now is the average do-it-yourselfer has to have a meter. There's no way around it. That's why it's number one, without doubt. What's this? A big ass halogen, what, 65, 45 or something as a test light? Hell yeah. That's what I call a super test light right there. And what I use this for is for testing grounds. You might say, well, wait a minute, why the hell would you use a headlight to test grounds? This headlight right here can put on average a four to six amp load on a circuit. What I'm doing is I'm taking a little jumper wire with an alligator clip on it, clipping this terminal right here. I'm gonna connect the other side with the other alligator clip to the battery positive. I have another set of jumper leads, so I'll just clip this guy right up here. If we touch a good ground with this probe, the ground is going to go through this jumper, through the headlight filament, and back to the positive of the battery. So, can you guys see this back here? Did you see that? I don't really know if you saw that. I'm touching this bracket bolt right here. So say my PCM and my Trailblazer had a problem where it wouldn't communicate and I found the corresponding ground pins in just say it's this connector. I don't know if it is so don't take my word on that. 
I would just pop this connector off and do this test. And I'm basically what I'll be doing is I'm testing the grounds through the wiring to wherever they may be. There could be one little strand of copper making that ground connection and it would look okay if you were using a DMM. So for checking grounds, I go for the super test light. Now we're on to my most personal favorite tool of all time as far as electrical testing and it's the power probe. This is the second one I've owned. I actually did a whole video on this because it is the best tool for what I do. I will not consider it to be an essential tool or something that you have to have to do what I do on this channel. But if you're into this kind of thing, this thing is awesome. I mean, this thing is loaded with cool features. Uh, the best thing that it has is, is the super long test leads. These super long test leads allow you to hook the power probe up to the battery in the front and you could do testing back at the back of the truck. I know I've already done a video for the power probe, but just in case someone who hasn't seen that wants a little demonstration of how it works, pretty much positive on the red, negative on the black. And what this will do is it will tell you if it finds ground. It lit up the negative symbol here. Also has a beeper. And if you were to touch positive, you're going to see the little red plus indicator light up. And this one also displays voltage. Rather than go through the whole spiel about what it can do, I'll probably just put up a link to an older video of mine for the power probe. And you guys watch that if, if you want to see more about this. The only problem with this tool, I guess, if you'd even call it a problem, is you're going to test ground. If you just had a single strand of copper coming off of this negative battery terminal and you touched it on this test light, it will light up green and it would look like a good ground. Try to run four amps through that little single strand of copper and tell me how you make out with that. Now, as of the date of this video right now, we've never done any amperage testing, but that is coming up. We have some things that we do have to test the amperage of to determine faulty components. We have two ways of doing that. This is a Craftsman clamp meter, the way this works. You can just clamp it around a live circuit and it'll tell you the amps passing through it. This also does other things. I think it has a voltmeter built in and it does continuity and stuff. But really the only thing I've used this for is blower motors, window motors, alternator output, and starter draw. Is this an essential tool? I'm going to say no. 99% of the things we do are basically go, no, go tests. Do we have voltage? Do we have ground? Even on the form, we rarely get into amps unless we're talking about alternator output. I wouldn't consider this an essential tool either. This is another kind of amp meter. It gives you heads for mini ATC and maxi fuses. And you would plug this tool in in place of the fuse. I don't think I'm ever going to show this one, but it may come up. Now we've got some accessories here. Now, as I said, one of the cool things with the power probe was it came with really long leads that you can hook up to the battery and then use the tester at the back of the car. Now, back in the day, way before the power probe came out, we used to have to do it a different way. This particular one, these leads came off the old power inverter that I had. Now, when you come off the battery with those leads, the positive wire has one of these little inline fuses I put in there. This way my test wires protect it in the event something bad happens. At the end of my test harness I've got a red power, a black ground. I kind of tin these up with solder and I tin them with solder so that way my alligators have a, can get a good bite into there. You'll also notice that I cut the ground lead about three inches shorter than the power. This way they never touch each other because that kind of wouldn't be good to wipe out our little fuse we put in there. When I did the taillight circuit board testing in the trailblazer I just went off one of my rear batteries. Well, 99% of trailblazers don't have rear batteries. This would be how you could get power to your, you know, test equipment at the back of the truck. Moving on. Well, you guys kind of saw this already with the super test light jumper. Uh, one I made out of two DMM leads. I just kind of spliced them together. Inside this jacket, there's just one wire. And what this gives me is a lot of versatility. I can have probes on each end. I can have alligators on each end. I can just set it up how I see fit and it works pretty good. Would this be an essential? Not really, but it'll make life a lot easier. The other one that you saw, it's just alligators on each end. 
It's a pretty decent length. You might see this someday. So if I have one that, you know, the battery's dying overnight, I'll take the terminal off of the battery post. I'll clip this onto the battery post. One of my meter leads is going to clip onto this metal clamp, and the other meter lead will connect onto the battery terminal, and I can read the amperage going through uh, to the negative battery. This is a, what they call a T-pin. I don't know why they call it a T-pin. Not really sure. These things are thin enough that they can back probe connectors without damaging anything. If you're in a pinch, a metal paper clip will work. I've, I've been known to use these once or twice. Now I do have some a selection of terminal de-pinning tools. Not an essential thing, just something I have for taking connectors apart if they need to be repaired or have pins replaced. Alright, what do we have here? An oxygen sensor. Let's throw it in the trash, right? Wrong! There's some parts in here we can use, specifically those tabs down in there. So let's take this guy apart. Hey, there's a little tab. If you do this just right, not sure how well you can see that, but all I did was I pushed on the little tab this way and I was able to pull this out. Now you guys have probably seen me do this before. If I have to test something in say a fuse block, whether it's where a fuse sits or a relay, I will stick one of these in. Can you guys see the difference in the thickness there? If I was to shove this thing into a hole that's designed to hug this little thin blade of this fuse right here, what's going to happen is I'm going to spread that terminal apart and I may never get good contact with this fuse again. And I've seen a lot of fuse blocks have to be re replaced just for that reason. By using our little jumper that we robbed from an O2 sensor, we can safely insert this into a fuse cavity or a relay cavity in a fuse block. You can get individual pins like this if you wanted to make your own little test leads. No problem there. I think Mauser has those. I guess the most critical things out of this whole pile of stuff we just talked about would be the T-pin and the fuse block testing tool. Now we're getting to some, I guess you'd call them specialty tools. Each one of these tools has their own purpose. They're not really necessary to have if you're watching what I'm doing on these videos, but I think they're worth a mention because they're electrical testing tools and they serve me well. First up we have the SMD DD1. This is used for setting max volume on head units and setting amplifiers for full clean power. Up next we have a little Velman oscope. I did a video for the Trailblazer cam sensor signal and I used a really fancy version of the oscope that probably cost five times as much as this. I don't know if this would be suited for doing that. I've never really tried it. What's this? A scan tool for testing electrical stuff? Absolutely. Think about this. You can go in with the Tech 2 and read two dozen sensors at the same time. Say like in my Trailblazer here, if you wanted to read the upstream and downstream O2 sensors, you plug the tool in and you can get your reading just like that. I wrote a review on this book like five years ago. It still holds its weight today. This is a book by Tony Candela. It's all about automotive electrical stuff. This thing is packed full of information from basic testing to fundamentals of wiring, making your connections. Uh, this is not you know, a, a paid advertisement or none of that shit. It's just I, I wish I had this book when I was uh when I was young. It was forever ago. In the troubleshooting section of this book, we start with uh one of the reverse lights not working in this I think it's a 72 cutlass. And he goes through the steps really, really well laid out and what to test, what to do. Let's look at another electrical book. Let's see, horn system diagnosis. All right. Most horn problems can be linked to wiring problems in the control or power feed circuit, the relay, or the switch. However, some horns are adjustable. Try to adjust the horns before replacing them. What the fuck? Try adjusting the horns? Try adjusting the horns? What if you were that dude that had like 19 horns in his car? All them horns? I can tell you that I've been doing this since I didn't have gray hair and I've never had to adjust a horn. Maybe it's an old school car thing. I don't know. The adjustment screw should be set at the point where the horn current draws between 4 and 6.5 amperes. 
amperage should be measured in series with an inductive pickup meter around the horn. This, 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 this. I will tell you like this. If I had a truck and the horn did not work, I would not do any fucking thing in that fucking book. And that's for the ASE test. No one's going to do that shit. An inductive lead, does it have power? Does it have ground? Put a fucking power probe across it and jump it. Does it work? No. Replace the motherfucker. Inductively? What the fuck? That right there is why some of this shit is just a fucking joke. That's why I recommend this. This is realistic. What are you more likely to do? Find out why one of your reverse lights isn't working? Or are you going to put an inductive meter around a, a horn to dial it into 4 to 6.5 amps? That's the kind of shit you find in a lot of these electrical books. That's why I gave Tony's book such a great review because it, it's so realistic. Uh, not just to me, a guy who just makes videos on, on YouTube, but as a guy that, that does electronics for a living. That's, that's the real deal, you know? I can break down that ASE book and compare it toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tony's, and Tony's kills that thing, you know what I'm saying? So I think that about covers everything that you have seen and will see on this channel as of now. Coming up, I've got a couple videos that are going to be kind of involved as far as electronics go. And I guess it's good that I have this up there now to have for you guys to use as a reference. I would say for the basics with a mid-grade meter, some jumpers and, and different accessories, you'd probably be in it for under $150, depending on how much of your budget went to the meter itself, which would be the most expensive uh, piece. I've said this before and I got a lot of flack for it, so I'm going to say it again. Uh, you don't see any fluke tools here. When I started out as a mechanic, you know, the, the snap-on guy said, this is the meter that you need. This is it right here. And, and that, that thing cost more than I made in two weeks. So I didn't buy it. I bought a Craftsman one instead. I got seven years out of it. And then I bought another Craftsman. And I've had that for ten years now, maybe eleven. I don't really have anything against fluke. You know, from what I've seen, they are great tools to have, but I just can't justify it. Maybe it's my way of saying, fuck you, Snap-on man. <laughs> stress this enough. Uh, the only reason I have a Snap-on meter is because I got a really, really, really good deal on it. And at the time, I needed a meter at work and at home. At that time, I was working in a shop, uh, doing repairs, and then also doing repairs on my own, you know, at home. So it made sense to have two. Again, that's the only reason I bought one. With that Craftsman meter working at the dealership, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of electrical problems were solved using a $70 Craftsman meter. If you're gonna be following what I do, whether in past videos or in future videos, and, and you need more clarification on something, you can always hit me up on the forum. Well, anyway, that about wraps it up for electrical tools. I know there was a lot of stuff to cover we do have some electrical stuff coming up which is kind of why I did this video we've got the trailblazer blower doesn't work on number five in my pickup the blower doesn't work at all to so those problems are going to require some troubleshooting it's going to require some of these tools and in fact I think that when we do the uh, blower motor amperage draw tests on each of those blower motors you're actually going to see the clamp meter in action which would be pretty cool so anyway thanks for watching as always if you like what you see subscribe to my shit